Hi, good morning. My name is Mike Magnet. I need to tell you a story. This is five or six years ago when the leader of El Crucio called me to say that she felt it was important for me to do a Royal One leadership for the upcoming Crucio. I don't remember the number, but it was in the Southwest Florida chapter of Crucio. And my first thought was, I'm certain you've called the wrong person. And I considered being out of town during the Crucio to ensure that I wouldn't be selected. But I prayed about it for a few days and contacted the leader back and decided to go ahead and do the Royal. The generation of the Royal and all the path required, the information that you need to put in the Royal, has all been written by someone who has a full understanding of the weekend and what needs to happen as the information that you're going to present in your Royal. You're going to be given a book or a flyer or a pamphlet or a website link of how to get to that particular piece of information. And after that, you're going to sit down and pray and then write your Royal. Really, the content of the Royal is well defined. The information that you need to put out is presented for you. Now, during the weekend, though, you're going to actually have to stand up in front of people and present the Royal. And I'm here to talk to you a little bit about how best to do that. So my picture is going to disappear and I'm going to show you the slides. We're going to talk about the slides. I'm sorry you can't ask any questions, but reach out to me on Facebook, reach out to me on my email address as it comes up at the end, and I'm happy to answer all of your questions. So here we go. This is a slide from a picture from a weekend in the not too very distant past. You can see we're a happy, smiling, colorful group of people. The team, in this case, is generally in front and the pilgrims for the weekend are behind us. But what's important for the next few minutes is how you can make a good presentation even more effective. Congratulations again on the fact that you're going to do the Royal. I think that's just awesome. But let's get started. So what's important? I'm going to go through a list of seven or eight topics. You have to connect with your audience. And the best way to do that is to let your passion for Curcio, let your passion for the topic shine through. You need to be honest with the audience about how it's important to you and why it matters. And we're going to go on with the part of explaining why to be or how to be enthusiastic in the audience in order to get your audience to respond. So I guarantee you that you will have a good response. The people are in the best circumstance to listen carefully to what you have to say and respond. All that's configured for you, but now you're standing up in front of the people and it's time for you to show your passion. You're going to need to focus on your audience's need. And by that I mean that all of the things that are in the presentation, the required information that you have to give to them, those are the needs. That's what's important that they hear. So that's all pre-built for you. And so as you prepare, as you're writing it, bear in mind the audience's need and not what you can tell them, but what they want to know about the information. And also while you're giving your presentation, you need to remain focused on your audience's responses and react to that. So while the audience is nodding off, that would be a time to speak louder. When the audience's arms are folded 
in front of them, there might be a, a good time uh, to reach out and shake someone's hand. Uh, you need to get around to the make sure that you're addressing the needs of the audience. Okay, so uh, it's important also for you to make it easy for the audience to understand and respond what you're talking about. So uh, I, for that, I recommend uh, that you actually have a, a small collection of slides uh, for uh, your presentation that can be on the video behind you uh, or off to one side to give uh, uh, additional color to, to address the audience's needs, who are the people who are visual. Uh, there are people who are listening to you, but there are also people who learn with their eyes. And, and even the people who need a tactile, tactile sensation, sometimes your talk, you're going to want to put something in their hands uh, to help them with that, to help them with their needs. So, okay, so number three, keep it simple. Concentrate on your core message. Uh, there is so much information to put out during your talk that there is simply no time for you to uh, uh, wax eloquent or, or wander away from the topic. Uh, over the weekend or over your weekend, you may or may not have seen that, uh, it's really easy to do because the Holy Spirit does move us sometimes, uh, but I need you to concentrate and make sure that you are uh, focused on the key message, the three points that you need your audience to take away. So for that, it's it's reasonable, very reasonable for you to look at the questions that are going to be asked them after your Royo and make certain that you give them all the information that they need in order to be able to answer that question. Uh, you need to be able to communicate your key message very briefly. And some experts have said that the 30 seconds uh, might be uh, or a, a 15 words might be a good, good way of, of wrapping up what needs to be said. So something that I learned uh, from the Marines in terms of keep it simple is that you uh, say what you're going to tell them, tell them what you're going to tell them, and repeat and remind them of what you told them. So uh, it, it's important for you to keep... Uh, uh, just on your core message. Now, there's a lot of additional stuff that you're going to uh, share with them. There, you should have two or three uh, gospel uh, or uh, Bible references in your in your document. I recommend that those be listed on your slides or put somewhere uh, in the uh, e extra information for them, the handout, uh, so that they're not looking at those names and numbers right now. But it's okay for you to mention them out loud and. Uh, and there is a ton of uh, uh, concepts that the the writers of your uh, presentation, the and the document that you were given, there's a ton of information that they need you to get across. But here's the thing: it's no, there's nothing wrong with you reading that uh, to them word for word, or presenting that to that information word for word. Don't feel like you need to go to a lot of trouble to rewrite what's already been well written. Your job is to get it, that core message, into the minds of the people that you're talking to. And remember, if, 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 you're saying, if you're thinking about saying something that doesn't contribute to the core message, don't say it. Okay, number four, smile and make eye, eye contact with your audience. I know this sounds easy, easily, but it's really, really hard, uh, especially if you're reading your... Uh, your speech or your presentation. Uh, so my recommendation is that you uh, read through your speech a collection uh, several times, many times, ten times, so that you are so familiar with your speech that the only time that you're looking at your paperwork is uh, to follow the outline or to make sure that you don't miss a key point or to read a number that you don't want to commit to memory. But don't let it be a uh, a written speech where you're looking down uh, at every word. So it's important for you to have a smile on your face and to make eye, to eye contact with everyone in your audience. Okay, maybe you don't really need to look at the eyes of the team very much, although I think there is some value in that. But more importantly, you need to look in the eyes of all those pilgrims one at a time during your speech to make sure that you personally 
are touching them. Uh, it, their, um, their impression of you, their ability to concentrate on the topic is going to be enhanced dramatically by you uh, being smiling, being happy, being uh, motivated, being uh, excited, and making eye contact with your audience. Uh, also, uh, we'll try and help you with this, but don't let anybody tell you to turn the lights down. Uh, seeing you is probably, well, it's in your case of uh, presenting a Royo, it's more important that the audience can see you than they can see your slides. Uh, I think the slides are important. I'm a slide guy, uh, but they need to see you. So, I've written this in capital letters so it makes it look like I'm shouting, and okay, I'll shout just a little bit, but the begin your beginning is critical in terms of getting your audience's attention and making it work. Okay, so they're gonna play music when you're on your way into the Royal. You get to choose what that music is. You get to choose whether it's upbeat or dull. You get to choose whether it's uh, focused on your topic so that they're hearing something about your uh, speech in the music before it even begins, or is it something that's just going to get them in the mood? It's something that's going to excite them, uh, something different that's going to uh, uh, pique their attention and make them want to listen to you. Now, uh, it's uh, it's very reasonable. Uh, I, my second bullet point that uh, the audience is going to give you a time to warm up. Uh, and they don't want to, uh, they're going to give you every chance that, that they can to, uh, to let you get your stride. They realize that you're in an uncomfortable situation. That's probably not something that you do every day. Although a, a lot of them really don't know whether you've ever given this story before. So uh, let's just say how important it is to start strongly. And my best recommendation is to put your story right there. An attention grammage, uh, grabbing uh, image on a slide is is good, but you need to start off with a story. You don't need to start out by who, telling them who you are or where you've been or how many Curcios you've been to. You want to tell them a story so that you grab a hold of their attention. Um, this is the rule for slideshows, the 10, 20, 30 rule. Uh, there is a guy, uh, Kawasaki of Apple, he suggested that slideshows should contain no more than 10 slides, uh, that your whole conversation should last more than 20 minutes, you're in good shape, that's all we want. Uh, a font size of no less than 30 points, so these are big, and it's in particularly important that you don't put too much information on any one slide. So all the slides are for in the, uh, during your Royo is to hammer home the point. So it's okay for you to put the answer to your Royo question on your very first slide. It's okay for you to put uh, five bullet points of extracted directly from the topic. It's okay for, for you to put the three uh, biblical references on a single slide in front of your uh, group just to increase their confidence that they're going to see it. It's okay for you to use the same slides more than once. Um, so this, the slides are something that backs you up. It's not the presentation. It's just uh, a, some additional information or some reinforcing some information. Uh, less is better than more, uh, but it's just a good piece of information that uh, enhances to the visual people the point that you're trying to make. Without the presenter, the slideshow can just simply cannot stand alone without the presenter. Uh, I mentioned it before, but it's important here. If you have a uh, in information that they need to carry away, uh, meaning that your the answer to the question is way too long for them to write down by hand, or it's a uh, or the Bible references, or the books references that you want to use, or uh, even if it's the um, the whole slideshow, it's okay. But make a handout and uh, provide it to your uh, provide it to the people. 
an important point that is not a slide bullet on my slide show is do not give the handouts to the people before the presentation remember in your story uh, you're going to do uh, uh, explain you know why you're there you're going to give them all the information and you're going to refresh them on the uh, the topic uh, by the, doing this the three, three steps of the slide presentation that I, uh, that I spoke about earlier but you don't want them looking down at their desk uh, reading your slideshow the only place that you want the eyes in the audience all of them is on you throughout the entire presentation so if they look momentarily at the slideshow that's fine but if you look up and you see that they're staring at your slideshow then well it's too late but flop out the slide or turn the slideshow off so that they're looking back at you so Human beings are programmed to respond to stories. It's important for you to tell stories. Stories help us to pay attention and remember things. If you can use stories in your presentation, your audience is more likely to engage and remember your points afterwards. It's a good idea to start with a story, but there's a wider point to you need your presentation to act like a story. So think about your story, about what you're trying to tell your audience, and create your presentation to tell it. There is a tendency in Crescio to tell a personal story that focuses the, uh, the topic uh, using some life event of the story teller. You're going to hear these. Uh, you've probably heard some. You may hear more. It's not uncommon for that to happen in a sermon. That's absolutely fine to do. But it needs the the story that you're telling has to be about the topic, and it has to lead them back to the conclusion that is your primary focus. So humans, the the pilgrims are going to listen to a story. They're going to uh, remember a story. Stories are the very best thing. Uh, the, the, the point of the story is the focus of your topic. It's, uh, I, I'm not going to list the, the topics that are in Curcio right now, but look at that list. That's what it's about. It isn't about your life. It isn't about the life of someone who has uh, even experienced a similar uh, set of uh, circumstances. The story is the, the presentation with the conclusion being your uh, the focus of your story. Um, number eight, use your voice effectively. So when you're talking uh, and you have visual aids, uh, the chances are, especially if you're reading your uh, uh, presentation directly off the page, uh, but more importantly, if you're emulating, oh, I don't know, the last 30 or 40 Episcopalian sermons that you've heard, the tendency will be to speak softly or to, uh, to have limited inflection in the hopes that the words that you're saying will touch their hearts. Uh, I can tell you, and I need to tell you emphatically, People can tell what you think is important by how you use your inflection. People can tell how you feel passionate about what you're talking about by their inflection. People can tell that the uh, how their lives are going to be affected by listening to the inflection. So uh, some people, uh, when I was used to be teaching, I uh, actually whacked on the side of the podium when I was uh, discussing a point that was going to be on the test uh, in addition to using my voice. But you've got to get and hold your audience's attention and I guarantee you that um, the monotone, uh, I'm reading this, uh, we're sitting side by side only type of communication is just not effective. Uh, it's it's important for you to use uh, the highs and the lows in order to uh, convey your um, topic, your focus effectively. 
Uh, and it's also important to use your body. Uh, so that means besides your tone of voice, uh, if you're uh, using your hands, good. If you're using, uh, if you're walking around the podium, good. If you have a clip-on microphone and you can move from table to table, clip-on mic microphone important so that uh, your hands are free, uh, but more importantly so that you're mobile and that you can reach your, uh, reach every one of your people, uh, reach up, you know, get to the tables without uh, wires or without holding something in your hand, uh, but also uh, it, it shows that you are uh, so confident in your topic that the uh, that standing behind the podium is not important to you, and they're they're going to pay more attention with you uh, of you moving than standing still. Uh, a moving target uh, is is just harder to follow, and yet the humans in the room, the pilgrims in the room, will follow you uh, with their eyes and will pay closer attention with you moving. So if you are, uh, uh, it's in, you know, there are a couple things on here. Don't cross your arms, uh, don't uh, put your hands in your pockets, and don't pace. Uh, but it's okay to uh, uh, to wander, to scratch your head, to uh, uh, to you know, raise your arms, uh, to um, Actually, every uh, motion uh, that you do is just a plus. So uh, even crossed arms are okay if if that if it makes the point of something that that you're talking about right then. But definitely make your gestures open and confident, and move naturally. And and definitely, uh, I believe I'm a firm believer that it's important to get right down there and uh, and uh, speak close to your customers. Uh, speak close to the pilgrims. Uh, I've done talks at Crescio now with uh, using a tablet, uh, using uh, note cards, using um, and a written speech. And the single most effective one is nothing. Uh, and so uh, now you are free to use your body. Uh, if, if you've got the other things, they're a, a distraction, they're a thing that's going to make it uh, harder for the people to uh, get the full piece of information that you want to send to them. Okay, so it's important to relax, it's important to breathe, and it's important to have a good time. Uh, if you are standing gripped to the podium, I guarantee you that they will be as tense as you uh, during your talk. Uh, the pilgrims will see your uh, attitude, they will see your concern, and they will be concerned right along with you. Uh, what you need them to be focusing on are is the, the, the words in your topic and coming closer to Christ, uh, getting a better understanding about their spirituality. And so take a deep breath, uh, relax, and enjoy doing it because you are, uh, for that moment, you know, God's voice on earth, uh, Jesus Christ's voice right now, uh, delivering information to the pilgrims. Uh, I know it sounds like an incredible burden. I know it's probably the last thing that you would want to re relax or enjoy. But here you are. You've been called to do this wonderful thing. And there, there, the Holy Spirit is right beside you, is right within you. You need to just enjoy this. Just uh, you've been through the the response ten times. Uh, you know what you've got to say, and now it's time to just let it come out. And that presentation, with you relaxed and breathing and enjoying it, will uh, touch the pilgrims to so much greater degree than you can imagine. So I'm just going to reiterate uh, for you. You were chosen to do this royal. Uh, it's important that you do it uh, for all of those pilgrims, for the lives of all those pilgrims in the room in front of you and how they're going to be touched. Uh, there's my email. Uh, I can send you this whole uh, slideshow if it will help you. 
uh, just let me know by sending me an email. Uh, God bless you. Uh, I wish you the very, very best in your royal. I'm confident that uh, the Holy Spirit and Jesus are going to make it easy for you and make it a wonderful experience for you, and more importantly, a wonderful experience for your pilgrims. Altrea. <laughs>